Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for July 3rd, 2021, recorded around 2.10 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential impacts of Tropical Storm Elsa to Cuba in the Florida Peninsula, and a look at the potential chase mission that we have upcoming for Elsa. So let's kind of jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we have Tropical Storm Elsa downgraded from a hurricane last night, but it's still a strong tropical storm with sustained winds of 70 miles per hour moving off towards the west-northwest here. And this will be very uh, interesting over the next couple of days to see how it's going to interact with the greater Antilles, mainly uh, Haiti and Cuba. And then we also have this front coming down here across parts there of the Florida Peninsula, really. And this is going to be the main catalyst for really trying to kind of steer the storm towards the north and kind of capture it near the Florida West Coast here. And this is going to be bringing some impacts over the next couple of days to Cuba and the Florida Peninsula and maybe as far north as the Carolinas over the next couple of days. New tropical wave coming off of Africa, unlikely to develop very unfavorable conditions uh, developing out here. So not really expected to develop, but it's certainly interesting nonetheless. So looking here at Tropical Storm Elsa, sustained winds right now of 70 miles per hour. The pressure has come up since the last advisory to about 1,002 millibars. So this is about 1,002 millibars. Still moving west-northwest about 29 miles per hour. Uh, we notice here that the track uh, forecast, again, does take this near or over Jamaica or near or over Haiti tonight, uh, near Jamaica, and then also near Cuba within the next about 24 to 36 hours before starting to turn northward, coming through Tampa, and then moving off towards kind of the north and east and an impacting uh, coastal Carolina, uh, both South and North Carolina, over the next couple of days. The official track from the National Hurricane Center uh, does indicate that, again, this will be, be bringing impacts to a wide swath of area. This could even bring impacts as far north here as the mid-Atlantic and northeastern United States before this kind of becomes an extratropical cyclone. Uh, but it is possible that it could bring some impacts against sustained winds right now, 70 miles per hour. Uh, but some weakening is forecast as this moves over Cuba, as expected, and then re-emerging over the Florida Straits with potential for additional intensification before landfall uh, within the next about uh, 72 to 96 hours. Now, looking at the visible satellite imagery here, we've had a couple of very important changes structurally and location-wise for the storm over the past uh, 24, uh, really the last 12 to 24 hours or so. What we noticed today in comparison to yesterday is especially in recent runs, in recent frames, we have deep convection developing because of land friction to the north out here across portions of Haiti. And this is going to try to wrap around the circulation at the same time, this convective mess that's off towards the east of the circulation is surging, the cloud cover is surging west, westward. This means that we likely have lower wind shear now across this area, and we may finally be starting to see the actual developing of any inner core structure. Now, uh, the one problem with this is that it's still booking off towards kind of the west-northwest here. Now, the other thing is here's the landmass of Haiti right here, and there is a lot and I mean a lot of mountainous train across there. And one way we can kind of take a look at that here is looking at this very cool uh, top, topography map here uh, that is uh, courtesy of QGIS. And what we can tell here is that our storm right now is sitting roughly in about here and is moving something like this. It is possible that today this ends up moving south of the island there of Haiti and notice all this darker kind of red and orange and yellow. This is all higher mountainous terrain. So if we get a storm that ends up kind of coming across like that, we may end up with a very disrupted low-level center of circulation in through here. Whereas if we have a storm that's kind of tracking something like that, uh, basically what uh, was kind of expected uh, previous days from models like the H-Wharf and the h mon and the GFS, this actually has a very strong possibility of re-intensifying once again, and it's not out of the realm of possibility to see this uh, reach and attain hurricane status once more once it enters this vicinity in through here. The trade winds have started to slow, and the storm will be starting to slow over the next 24 hours as it approaches Cuba. Uh, but again, land interaction to Cuba does seem possible. But again, even as we shift here towards Cuba, and the one thing that's very important is, again, if it hits anywhere in here, 
the very mountainous terrain is going to be a very uh, problematic thing. However, if we kind of zoom out here and we have a storm, let's just say that kind of ends up riding something like this, it's possible that we may end up getting a storm that is a little bit less uh, broken up and through here. Or if we get something along the track like that to kind of come up anywhere within this vicinity, we may end up getting a track that is a little bit less disturbed in this region. So there is a realm of possibilities to where this might go, but it is going to have to shoot the gap between, again, Haiti today and then over the next 24 hours, uh, 24 to 36 hours, it's going to also have to shoot the gap with all this mountainous train across parts of Cuba. And one of the things that upper level recon will provide is where the bridge is kind of setting up. Initially, if this were to just kind of keep on its initial motion, this would head into Cuba in some of those very mountainous train out across here. Actually, some of the very mountainous train that's kind of across here, you would see it attract something like this right now. And that is likely to disrupt the circulation considerably as it moves across there. But now, one of the other things that we'll have to watch is any mesoscale changes may in fact actually move this over the island there of Haiti. So it is very important to understand that this could still technically swing towards the northwest if we get just a slight mesoscale shift in the uh, her in the tropical storm, also a hurricane, in the tropical storm, and this would likely shift it into Haiti. But on its current uh, forecast trajectory, it seems like this would come very close to the island of Haiti but likely end up missing the island as it is moving almost due towards the west-northwest here. And the latest recon uh, pass that has been in there today, again, kind of confirmed the same story. We've had a west or northwest or kind of a west-northwest moving storm today. And if we kind of extrapolate that out, we can kind of see that this has kind of been the track. And maybe now we're starting to see that kind of move just a little bit more due to the west here. And this is certainly a possibility. Again, it's still a lot of the heavy weather on the northern side as we had expect. And this land influence across here is also going to promote a little bit of stronger flow on the northern side of this here. Uh, but with that, what's going to end up happening is we're starting to see the beginning processes of a more consolidated inner core structure. And that is likely to help this thing uh, stay together. So we thought that maybe earlier uh, in the morning, this may actually move over the island here of Haiti and completely disrupt the circulation and potentially even open this up into an open wave before it even gets here to near Cuba. But now the things are starting to turn. And again, this will matter again for the intensity later down the road for Cuba and for Florida. So this bears monitoring uh, as this kind of moves across that region. And again, I do suspect, by the way, that we will have watches and warnings posted for parts of the Florida Keys and Peninsula later today or tomorrow. Now, one thing to also note from the latest recon plane that's been in there is, again, the vertical uh, orientation of the low and mid-level centers. Again, the low-level center of circulation is located roughly in about here in the mid-level center. The 700 millibar center is located in there. This also shows that we have a little bit of discontinuity still between the low and mid-level centers, but they are likely to be adjoining later today or tomorrow. Again, this is kind of what the pattern is right now. Low-level center here, mid-level center here. And with that, we have two systems that are, we have two lows that are not vertically stacked. And because of that, intensification, if any, is going to be very slow to occur. Once these trade winds start to reduce and the forward motion of the tropical cyclone ends up decreasing, this is when our low and mid-level centers will probably and likely realign. And there's suggestions already that this is starting to occur today. And again, the sooner that this ends up kind of occurring is going to mean the sooner that this has the potential to intensify if it can remain south here of the island of Haiti. And that's going to be very important, like I said, for the long-term future of our storm. If we look here at the A50 vorticity product, this is the spin in the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground. And for context, the reds and whites, that's your highest cyclonic spin at your 5,000 foot level. And what's important to notice right now is, again, we have a very healthy structure right now, uh, but it is still kind of elongated in this area. Again, we kind of have this little bit of an elong elongation uh, but by and large, we have our storm that is well centered in through here, well organized. But the low level center has lost a little bit of its uh, definition uh, earlier this morning. But it does appear that the vigorousness 
of that is starting to come back uh, through this afternoon, especially if we can keep south here of the island of Haiti. Again, that's going to matter. And the upper ocean heat content values, actually, what we'll take a look at first, we'll take a look at the actual, yeah, we'll take a look at Kira upper ocean heat content values. This is basically a measure of the water warmth uh, at depth, basically. And for context here, these lighter blue colors onwards towards the right of the scale, this is when you start to get towards the upper ocean heat content that is highest, especially in the yellows and on towards the reds. And tropical cyclones love to upwell cooler water, but if you have high upper ocean heat content, which is what these warmer colors represent, it only upwells warmer water and thus continues the strengthening cycle as a positive feedback loop. And where our storm is right now, we can see that again, our storm is sitting within a fairly decent upper ocean heat content environment, and it will be moving, if it can split the gap, it will be moving into an even higher area of upper ocean heat content through the next couple of days. And this is going to be what's going to be very important for our storm because it may allow uh, for some intensification if it indeed can kind of thread the needle between these islands here and then kind of shoot the gap in through here. And again, that kind of really matters because if you get a storm that kind of tracks a little bit further towards the north, the upper ocean heat content just isn't as uh, vulnerable or isn't as uh, sufficient out here near the Bahamas at uh, this time of the year to really induce significant strengthening where out here in the southeastern Gulf of Mexico, you have a little bit more in those water temperatures at the surface are fairly warm. This is the actual sea surface temperatures here, not anomalies, but actual temperatures. And notice where Cuba is right here. We have water temperatures near the Florida Keys of about 28 to 29 Celsius. And that kind of represents some fairly warm water all the way up here to about uh, Cedar Key. So if you get kind of a storm like the NHC is forecasting to kind of come out like that and eventually kind of move inland like that, it'll be riding in that very warm water. Now it is shelf water, so that means that it is easily more upwellable, meaning that the upwelling factor is going to be greater because it is not like out here where the water depth is substantial. So it's very important to kind of understand that, but these water temperatures do support something uh, that may be a little bit more stronger than 65 miles per hour. Uh, the kind of the high end of this would be a hurricane that moves in kind of a low end category one that kind of moves into near Cedar Key or Tampa. Uh, that is plausible, but not necessarily likely at the moment, uh, just given what the storm has to kind of go against it. And if we look here on the GFS forecast, this is the 12Z run valid for 2 p.m. this afternoon. Here's our storm outlined right here by this uh, kind of shading here and in the circle. And we have our ridge of high pressure right now that is to the north. And this ridge has kind of been pumping in these very strong trade winds, easterly trade winds over the last couple of days. And that's been what's kind of forcing the storm to be racing at such a high speed. Now, the GFS forecast here, again, does shoot the gap. Uh, but it ends up kind of weakening the storm. And one of the reasons for that, if we look here at the 200 millibar wind uh, in the upper part of the atmosphere, we have a very favorable upper level anti-cyclone. Uh, but if we kind of look here at the GFS forecast, what we'll notice is that we end up kind of getting uh, still a fair amount of shear in the lower levels because we have stronger winds at the surface compared to a loft. And because of that, we end up getting this reduced um, you know, we get this reduced uh, upper level anticyclone and the shear is a little bit stronger in this region. Now, again, it doesn't really intensify it that much. Again, you can kind of see that we still kind of stick with around 1,003 to 1,004 millibars before it moves over Cuba. And at this time, it would be almost impossible for a storm to really get going uh, eventually up here near Florida because it would just not really be embedded in a favorable upper level environment. We also have a trough that's going to be digging down as we get the storm closer to Florida, and that is likely going to be inducing some southwesterly vertical wind shear into the storm. And we can also look here on the GFS forecast that there would be also some dry air that could be entrained into that circulation to be pumped in uh, on the western side of that circulation. <clears throat> and because of that, there is still some uncertainty here. The H wharf, for what it's worth, on the 60 run also had much of the same. If you look here at the 200 millibar wind profile in the upper part of the atmosphere, we notice that the storm does intensify as it moves past uh, Haiti there. It does intensify, but is still stuck within some moderate 
uh, northwestern vertical wind shear and moves over Cuba and significantly disrupts the system's organization. Now, after that time, though, it does organize once again as it starts to slow down. You can see that it kind of enters water here by about 11 a.m. Monday, and this kind of takes until about really uh, about 5 a.m. Tuesday to be moving inland across parts of South Florida. If this were to verify, this would have at least 12 hours uh, plus to undergo some intensification while it's in the Florida Straits before moving inland. But rapid intensification does not seem likely at this point. Now, one of the things that, again, is kind of pointing towards this, again, if we look here at the vortex average sounding uh, for this environment, what we can also tell is that there will be some pretty strong shear coming out of the south here. Again, we have some pretty strong winds at the surface. And then aloft here, we have southeasterly winds at the surface and aloft here, we kind of get some of this really funky uh, business here where, where we kind of have south southeasterly winds and then that kind of backs here at about 150 millibars towards the northwest at the top there of the tropopause. Uh, and we also have some fairly dry air that is aloft in the mid-levels. And as that kind of gets transported down to the surface, that would kind of cause sinking air. And that in turn causes some dry air intrusions. And we can see that within the relative humidity that we have a lot of dry air on the western side. And it kind of finally tries to wrap up here by 2 a.m. Tuesday as it is moving through the Florida Keys. It tries to wrap up. Now, this is kind of on the right side of the distribution at this point. The official forecast calls for this to be on the western part of the Florida Peninsula and moving like that. Not necessarily 100% buying the solution of the H-Wharf and uh, more so kind of like, you know, not really buying that solution where the track takes it more in towards the Florida Keys and does something like that. And the storm eventually kind of deepens it down there to uh, roughly about 997 or so. Uh, but you can see compared to previous runs, certainly it doesn't have a hurricane now, could we still see a hurricane? It is feasibly possible if we get a storm that, again, misses Haiti completely and moves over the less mountainous strain of Cuba while simultaneously intensifying. But the odds of that are a little bit low right now, given that. So the pattern is going to be a little bit unfavorable as this system kind of moves through Cuba and then up into the Florida, Pen uh, Florida Peninsula and the Florida Straits. Because of this upper level trough here, going to be inducing some southwestern vertical wind shear and that will be able to induce a little bit of dry air entrainment into our circulation on the western side, which may in fact uh, be the one devoid of convection. Either way, it looks like it's going to be a wet mess for parts of Cuba and the Florida Peninsula. So again, if you are in those areas, it is best to take uh, precautions as necessary. Get your hurricane preparedness plans ready in case of a hurricane is coming your way. Uh, and even a low-end tropical storm can do some damage. 40, 50 mile per hour winds. Uh, can still, you know, knock over, you know, a few loose trees and, you know, cause a few scattered power outages uh, in certain locations. So it is just important to kind of keep that in mind. And then also down the road here for parts of Georgia and coastal Carolina, uh, including South Carolina and North Carolina, is it, it is important also that you kind of understand that this will be heading your way as well and may bring some impacts here again. By the time this gets to Jacksonville, this uh, sustained wind is still at 60 miles per hour. And by the time it gets up here to about the, you know, just past Myrtle Beach, winds are expected to be about 40. So that, and that will give it, that will kind of change. So just kind of keep that in mind. But at the moment, there will be a wide range of impacts to a wide swath of areas, including the potential for a few tornadoes. All right. So with that being said, we are going to start getting ready uh, to potentially be on a first research mission for this season. Uh, we will be kind of considering all of our opportunities. We may be heading south uh, or kind of towards the southwest, towards Tampa. Uh, we may be heading maybe a little bit closer to Fort Myers. Uh, we'll just kind of have to see based on the latest trends of the system. Luckily, we're already here in Central Florida anyway, located in the Orlando area. So luckily, we don't have to go that far. But we will be taking our equipment. Already kind of got plans for that. And uh, we'll just kind of have to see what ends up happening. So we'll kind of keep you updated on that. If you want to follow me on Twitter, again, it is Mike Romali one Links will be down in the description down below. We are supported by our people on Patreon. If you guys do want to support that or become a channel member, that would be greatly appreciated as well. All right. With that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Mike Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.